Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NewCoder.com and welcome to part 11 of building our CRUD application from scratch. So in this tutorial, we're going to be doing some user input validation using Joy. So to get started, let's actually install Joy. So I'm just going to come down here, npm install Joy. And now that we have our Joy package installed, let's actually include it within our application. So I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to say const joy is equal to require joy. Now from here, let's actually develop a schema for a to do document. Now, if you don't know what a schema is, it's basically a blueprint that an object has to follow. So let's come down here and let's define our schema. So I'm just going to say const schema is equal to joy dot object. And now we want to define our keys. Now from here, we're going to give our properties and the type that they should be. So for example, we only have really one object within this tutorial and that's a to do. So here I have a to do and the type that this should be is of type string. So I'm just going to say joy dot string and we're going to make it required. So when the user inputs his to do, this schema is going to make sure that it's a string and that it's not empty. So required means that if the user tries to submit a to do that's empty, we're going to get an error. If the user tries to submit a number instead of a string, we're going to get an error. So that's how we're going to validate user input. So I'm just going to end a semicolon here. Now let's take a look at our routes. So what we want to do is validate anything we get back from the user. So for example, this route parameter here, we would want to validate. Now this is not a to do object, but this is the primary key, but anything the user sends back to us, you would want to validate. So this request body, we would also want to validate for. And if we take a look here, request body here, request params here, and that's pretty much it. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna do one example with you guys and you guys could pretty much figure out how to do the rest of yourselves. So I'm gonna to choose to do our post route. So we're gonna validate the user input sent by the body. So from here, I'm gonna call joy.validate. And validate is a method which is gonna take three arguments. The first argument is the object that you want to validate. So we're passing in user input. The second argument is the schema or the blueprint that you want to check against user input. So we're just going to pass in our schema we just created. And the third argument is our callback function. And we get the error and we get the result. Now from here, I'm going to say if there's an error, what I want to do is we're going to create an error. So I'm just going to say const error is equal to new error. And we're going to pass in the message that we want to display to the user. So I'm just going to say invalid input. Next, I'm going to give this error a HTTP status code. So I'm just going to say error.status. And I'm just going to set that to 400. Next, what I want to do is call the next method. And that's because we're going to have a middleware handle our errors. So I'm just going to say next, and we're going to pass in the error we just created. So from here, since we're using a middleware, we have to pass in next as a param up here. So now from here, let's code our else statement. So if there's no errors with the user's input, what do we want to do? So I'm just going to say else. And what we want to do is actually get our database. I'm just going to cut this out. I'm going to paste this in within here. And now here, what we can do is some more error handling. So right here, I could come here. And instead of just printing this out to the console, what I could do is exactly what I did above. So I could copy this, just paste this in here. And instead of saying invalid input, I could say something like this. I could say failed to insert to do document. And we're going to leave the status code the same. And we're going to call our middleware error handle here. So from here, we could go down to this else statement. 
and we're going to have to pass in a couple of more things. And this is just to make it easier for the front end. So for example, we are going to pass in a message and this message is going to be displayed if we successfully insert it into the database. So I'm just going to say successfully insert it to do. The next thing that we're going to pass in is an error property. And we're going to set that to null. So that means that there was no errors. And we're going to be using this to test in our front end. So this looks good to me. So now let's code our custom error handler, our custom middleware. So I'm just going to go down here and let's put it here. So now I'm just going to say app.use and we're going to pass in our error object. Next is going to be the request object, the response object, and the next object. Now here, what I could do is actually send a response back from the server. So now I'm just going to say res.status, and we're going to set the status to the error status that we set in our post route. So I'm just going to say error.status. Next, I'm going to call the JSON method. So we're going to be sending this back to the user. And from here, I'm going to pass in an error property, and this is going to be an object. And it's going to have a property of message, and we're going to pass in our error message. So I'm just going to say error message. All right, now from here, what I want to do is let's head over to Bootstrap and let's get our alert that we're going to be using to display to the user. So let's go to Bootstrap and get our alert that we're going to be using to display to the user whether or not our post request was successful or not. So from here, I'm just going to go to search. I'm going to type alert. And you can see that we have a bunch of alerts here. What I want to do is get our success alert. And we're going to be using this to display when we successfully posted something. And I want to use the danger alert when we get an error. I'm just going to come down here and we only need one of these. So I'm just going to pick up the danger one. I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to head back to Visual Studio Code. Now from here, I'm just going to save our app.js file. I'm going to go to index.html. And what I want to do is actually put this underneath our display. So right here, I'm just going to paste this here. And let's actually steal some code from our display. I'm just going to add a break here just to give us some space. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this here. And what I want to do is get rid of this unordered list. And we're going to be putting our alerts here. So I'm just going to copy this. Paste this in here. Let's tidy this up a bit. And what I want to do is actually get rid of this and let's add an ID attribute of message. All right, from here, let's actually scroll down to our script tag. And what we want to do is actually get our message that we just gave an ID for. So I'm just going to say const message and we're going to be getting our ID. Now from here, I'm just going to say message.hide because I don't want to show it yet. Next thing I want to do is create a helper function. So I'm just going to come down here. I'm just going to say const display message. And the first parameter is going to be a flag, whether or not we should display the success alert or the danger alert. The second argument is going to be the message that we want to display. Now from here, I'm just going to say if flag. So if this is true, and let's actually make a comment. So if we had a successful post, what we want to do is I'm going to say message dot remove class. And we're going to remove the alert dash danger class. And I'm just going to copy this, paste this, and we're going to change this to add class. And we're going to add the success alert. Next, I'm going to say message.html and we're going to pass in the message that we want to display. And I'm going to say message.show to actually display our alert. So now from here, since we have a success, we need a else statement to display the failure. So I'm just going to say else 
And now I'm just going to copy all of this. And pretty much we're going to do the opposite. So instead of saying remove danger class, we're going to remove the success class. And here we're going to be adding the danger class. And these two lines of code are going to be the same. So actually by coding this, I actually forgot to remove this part from our HTML. So yeah, so let's get rid of this. And we have our alert and we have our message. Okay, so that looks good. So now let's actually go down to our post. So here's our post. And from here, what we're gonna do is actually wrap this if statement. So I'm just gonna come up here. I'm going to say if, and we're going to use the not symbol. So data dot error. So if there are no errors, what we want to do is execute this block of code. But what we want to do is actually get our alert to display. I'm just going to say display message, and we're going to set this to true because that means that everything went okay. And then we're going to pass in the message that we want to display. I'm just going to say data dot message. And from here, I'm going to make an else statement. I'm just going to copy this. Paste this here. And instead of true, we're going to say false. And let's display our error message. So I'm just going to say data dot error dot message. Now from here, let's actually go back down. We do have to reset our to do input. So I'm just going to call that. So now let me just save this. And let's actually test this out. So I'm just going to come down here, node app. And let's see what we got wrong. So joy.string.require says require is not a function. So let's go back to our app.js. And it's probably not required. It's probably required. So now let's save this. Let's clear the terminal, node app. All right, so now our application is up and running, and now let's actually test this in the browser. So now we have our to-do application up and running. So now if I was type a string and hit create, you see that we get successfully inserted to-do. And if I was to have an empty string and hit create, you can see that nothing's updating. So that means that we made an error. So now let's head back to Visual Studio Code. So from here, let's just go back to our index.html file. Let's actually take a look at this. So we have our if statement here. And that's pretty much the reason because this if block is only supposed to be wrapped around this if condition. But we also have our else block here. So this code isn't being executed. So let's actually copy this. Let's get that out of there. And from here, we just paste that here. And we don't need two resets here. So now let's save this and now let's head back to the browser. So I'm just going to hit refresh to reload the page. And we could test this one more time. So we inserted our to do OK. Now we have a blank user input. Hit create. And you can see that we get a warning invalid input. So that's pretty much how you could validate user input using Joy for our to do application.